Welcome to Recycled Idaho, where two recycling industry veterans, Brett Eckhart and Nick Snyder, explore Idaho businesses and organizations that are putting in the work to keep Idaho environmentally and economically viable at the same time. Take a listen to how these entrepreneurs, business owners, and operators are making things happen in the great state of Idaho. In this episode of Recycled Idaho, we get a chance to sit down with Lee Belmar, owner of Abyss Towing and the president of the Idaho Tow Association. We also sit down with Rick Burlingame, owner of Boise Valley Towing and the District 3 director for the association. These two have helped so much on improving the tow industry in Idaho, as well as providing a truly essential service to our community with both their respected companies. Take a listen. All right, welcome everybody. Here's another episode of Recycled Idaho. I'm sitting here with two giants in the industry of the tow industry. I got Lee with Abyss. How you doing, Lee? Good, how are you? Doing well. I got Rick with Boise Valley Towing. How you doing? Good. So basically, let's just kick it off. And Lee, do you want to start? Kind of tell us how you got into the tow industry. Oh, God, it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was attending college in Bethesda, Maryland, and a tow job was a job. It wasn't rocket science, and uh, did it the whole time I was in college. Got my degrees, went off, and just kept doing it. Never, ever changed. I tried to change one time, and I wasn't, I was, the hooks were in me, so to speak. Yeah. And it's just been my whole life for 31 years so far. And where, what city did you start in? In Bethesda, Maryland. And over in Maryland. Yeah. Okay, then, so. Uh, I'm, I'm from New England, and I found the school down there, and then I went back to New England and towed there forever. So what brought you to Idaho? Uh, my in-laws. My, my family's out here. Okay. My, my in-law family's out here, and they're getting older and needed help. My wife wanted to come out and support them, so here we are. What's the difference between East Coast towing and uh, West Coast or Northwest mm-hmm. towing? Uh... The is there a difference? difference? There is. There's yeah. a huge difference. Uh, East Coast people are rude and impatient. West Coast or Midwest? More laid back. A lot more laid back. Uh, here, everyone has a gun and no one's going to use it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Roadways and trees. Yes. Yeah. 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 Back East. I, I grew up in upstate New York, so... Yeah. Yeah, the give us your terrain's give us, different. Yeah, give us your backstory, yeah. Rick. I'd love to hear it. Um, 16 years old, uh, I worked for a buddy, and he put me in a dump truck, and that was pretty much the start of my driving career. And uh, I just loved trucks. Then my next job, uh, I worked for a salvage pool, an insurance salvage pool. Uh, my best friend's dad owned it, and he put me in a tow truck, and uh, that was it. So... About a year before I went into the service, um, I spent about a year, year and a half driving tow trucks. Um, went from the salvage industry into regular towing, and uh, that was 33, 4 years ago. And it just kind of went from there. Time went into the service as an equipment operator, uh-huh. and uh, to give me that another level of, of uh, experience, and was in that for six years as a reservist. And, uh, yeah, there hasn't been a year gone by in my life I have not been in a tow truck in 34 years, almost 34 well, years. Well, that's awesome, man. I, all the towers I've ever talked to, it sounds real similar to the scrap metal guys. Like, once it gets in your blood, like, it's just yeah. kind of part of you. It's not even, like, a job anymore. You know, it's just part of you. Yeah. Like, that's how I look at, like, the scrap side. Like, that's just what part of my life. You Some know? people call it stupidity, but... <laughs> We get um, the same comments. Yeah, we right. get. Just, just so don't, don't, don't yeah. feel like you're getting pigeonholed. I, I, I call it a special kind of stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> and you both being from the East Coast, we had a driver at one point um, from New Jersey, and I could te- definitely tell a difference between him um, and his willingness to just go do bins anywhere. Because I'd be like, man, that's a tight fit. You might want to send that shorter truck. And he'd be like, nah. I'll just park it. I got it. Because he's so used to doing, doing, he was a driver. He was a driver in New Jersey. So, like, you guys probably, having that background, you guys could feel like you could probably get into most places. Yeah, more space and you know what to do with with some of those guys. Yeah. So, real quick, you guys are both part of the association. Do you want to kind of go into that? The Toe Association. The Toe Association, sorry. Do you want to kind of go into that? got it started, so we'll start with him. Yeah, let's just yeah, give us some background on the Toe Association. I, and then just real quick, like to like preface it, one of the coolest things that I liked about this is you guys obviously 
it's two separate companies. Um, but you guys have, have found a way to help your industry by working together, bringing other tow companies, people you might compete with on a daily basis, but I call it like a friendly competition to where you're not trying to cut each other's necks to do business, but, but for the betterment of the industry, you guys have kind of created this tow association and just kind of give us a little bit of background on that and what, what made you, you know, what, what, what kind of brought it about? Sure. So, uh, like I said, I'm being from the East Coast. I was involved in the association in New Hampshire, in Maryland, and in Florida. Um, and every state pretty much has one. Uh, I got out here, and there had been one here in the past, but there wasn't one active. Um, <clears throat> there were a lot of internal industry complaints. You know, you're out there every day, and, and you work hand-in-hand hand with these other companies, right? You're mm-hmm. doing rents. You're doing well, even just the insurance calls. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they double dispatch, and two companies show up. So you're constantly talking to other people, and there's complaints that get mentioned and and talked about. And there seemed to be a lot of that. I was kind of new to Idaho, but still, there's a lot of complaints, and we're going to change this, but nothing ever happened. People talked about it, and it just kind of went to the wayside. Um, And the reality is, I mean, you can have eight, ten little, I use the term rogue groups, um, that all have their own agenda, and they're not working together. So if you try to go somewhere with it, and this is what Rick and I have talked about eons over and over and over and over again, when you're not a professionally legal entity that is bonded together for a common goal and purpose, you're not going to reach the goals that you want to reach because people aren't going to give you the time, the respect, the understanding, or even just be able to be heard. Um, doesn't mean you're going to accomplish everything you set out to do, but that was the goal. Let's take those random conversations and complaints, and let's actually do what an association is really supposed to do. So the whole goal was exactly that. We're all competitors in some regard, right? We're all towing companies. Right. But the reality is there's, you know, Rick does heavy duty. I don't. So you can, still can have your own kind of niche. Everyone's got their own thing. Well, and that's that's... I think one of the biggest things is, yes, we come together as an industry, and that's I think that's kind of the key. Mm-hmm. We're together as an industry. We don't talk about each other's business, so to speak. Yeah. You know, what I do daily to, to, to earn our business, to keep our business, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, some things are very surface. You know, you can see it. Yes, I have mm-hmm. X amount of trucks, and he has X amount of trucks or whatever, but or the the goal is to, to come together as an industry as for whatever the common good is, whether it be law or uh, ethics or our dealing with our roadside assistance companies, insurance companies, um, so safety. that we can safety, yeah. training, all those things. So those are more of the common goals. Those are, That's what we're truly are after. Um, I don't necessarily want to, you know, copycat him and yeah. he doesn't want to copycat me you know we've both been very successful in our businesses and um and that's but we f- don't talk about that portion of yeah it. that's mm-hmm. the feel i get from being at some of those meetings is like people are there to kind of fix some common problems i'm, I'm very you neutral I, yeah. I don't even wear company logos when i when i have when we have association meetings yeah There's because i don't feel that that's like more blue collar you know like mm-hmm. The scrap metal mm-hmm. recycling industry, your guys' industry. There's certain industries out there that, rightly or wrongly, have gotten sometimes a, a tougher rap than mm-hmm. others. So, oh, yeah. like, the, by creating an association and doing stuff like this, and it kind of helps you get the word out there, like, hey, we are a blue collar. We, you know, we work our butts off for a living, but A, we enjoy it, and B, we're doing it the right way. And we're trying right. to associate with other people that are right. trying to do it the right way. And it, and I, I fell into this that. by accident. Um, <laughs> I, I, I got tripped f- and fell <laughs> into that door. Uh, Face first. <laughs> I fell into this totally by accident. I, I got fed up with uh, cops being the only ones protected on the roadways and decided to start making contact with representatives and senators in our state to try to get the move over law uh, upgraded to include towers. Um, and then throughout my conversations and knocking on doors and, ring, and ringing doorbells and such, I uh, ended up getting pretty tight with ITD. And um, even though they couldn't really endorse anything, I felt they needed to be included as well because mm-hmm. 
I worked side by side with those guys on many big wrecks. And if anybody you want behind you with a sweeper instead of a broom is those guys. Yeah. And they're mm-hmm. in harm's way as well. So <clears throat> as I started into this, I called Sarah Biggers, who um, we've worked with in the past with Crossroads. And she says, hey, have you talked to the association? And I said, what association? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next thing I know, I went to one meeting and I was voted as a district director. And I didn't even know it had happened. Honestly, yeah. there was something that happened in that in that <laughs> Denny's, I think it was. It was Denny's. And <laughs> two, two weeks later, he's like, hey, you were, you know, unanimously, you know, da-da-da for president or for director. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that was, gotcha. <laughs> that was two years ago. Yeah. So, so what's, how many members, how many uh, active members do you guys have part of the association right now? Currently statewide, we have uh, 29 tow company members, and then we have uh, seven sponsors or affiliates. Like affiliate members, mm-hmm. okay. Which is good. So, I mean, you start with a couple, mm-hmm. and you feel like it's building. I mean, every year you feel like you're, you know, more people are starting to get involved and starting to want to put their two cents in. Yeah. It was, it was a challenge, but yeah, it's coming around. I think there was a lot of reservation <coughs> and people not understanding, you know, what the association was all about and, and what the benefit is. Yeah. So and it's coming around. I think we're getting a lot more response now. And well, the biggest thing, the association is a voice. Mm-hmm. So it, it may be uh, inclusive, uh, inclusive of 30-some people, 35 people, or whatever that number was. But when we walk into a room, it's one. Yeah. yeah. Do you think and there would have been a, a possibility to pass that move-over law without the association? I think it had been a fine line. Yeah. Um, because when you go in as a group, uh, that means more than one person is speaking to. Uh, You're speaking these for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And so, because I think that was important. And that that actually brought in uh, other groups to us, mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, we represent uh, this group of people, and we mm-hmm. represent this group of people." You know, like AAA and. Um, taxi cab companies and mm-hmm. you know all kinds yeah. of different yeah. transportation things i mean it was amazing you know garbage trucks uh, mm-hmm. I, I was amazed at how many people wanted to jump on board with this um and i i had meetings with with many of these people so that opened a lot of doors um so now i know one two four more people i can go hey what do you think about this bill mm-hmm. you know yeah. Can we either um, make this better or shut it down if it's not good for our industry? You know, I imagine if if Idaho all of a sudden said, "Hey, uh, you can't collect platinum anymore," yeah, you'd probably flip out. You know, yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever, whatever, yeah, we're, whatever yeah, it is. Any metal yeah, recycling, like okay. recycling industry. Um, we're the same way. You know, they they try to change and regulate. Um, how we do paperwork, how we get the information, how quick we put it out, mm-hmm. uh, all that kind of thing. And, and we had so. a kind of a similar crossroads um, over here what, at when they tried to pass a bunch of metal theft um, legislation. Oh, yeah. It had to be about eight, nine years, some, somewhere where then they where they went from, you know, handwritten tickets to now you have to record every transaction. You have to videotape. You have to do this, record the license plate. I mean, it went from... From very little rules to, I mean, a very expensive upgrade for every single facility and a lot more admin, back end. And I think sometimes when people are looking at adding legislation or taking away legislation, they don't really realize the impact on the industry. They just There's this, this problem that somebody's really pushing to get fixed and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, 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 guys. Like, there's so many more moving parts to this puzzle than... When it's more difficult to get, you know, uh, than getting a passport. Yeah. Um, You know, are are we supposed to regulate the rest of the world? Yeah. Do I really need to know your child's name? Yeah. I mean, mean, sometimes that's how ridiculous it seems. I know. And, you know, and and then to to document and keep all that. Yeah. uh, Is, you know, crazy. Well, the awareness that um, you guys brought at the TOE show over last September when they you had the entry point yeah. be where 
it was how you guys operate on the freeway every day. Well, that's how much space. Home. That's how much they, yeah. space they gave people to enter. Yeah. So that was super cool to see that. That was a big, big because that and that kind of b- brings awareness. Like, like shit. I don't want to be on the side of the road and an eighty mile per hour car almost hits me. Yeah. So that, like, your guys' job is dangerous, man. Right. And like, that's something like I deal with towers a lot and i didn't quite realize that even until i was there thinking like holy smoke so i'm i think that was a that great was a, law that was a, t- a twofold uh thing for that entry the way it was set up <clears throat> one it was to show people our side of it <clears throat> but it also shows their side of it as, as the public what if you were that person stuck on the side of the road waiting for us to get to you mm-hmm. yeah and you know yeah this this state turned us down on that portion of the law where they didn't want to include the public um, for reasons that are still bizarre to me mm-hmm. at this point in time. Um, and I'd still like to try to get that uh, added to the yeah. law because without the public, we wouldn't be there. Without the public, the police wouldn't be there. Without the public, the fire department wouldn't be there. Any of the first responders wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the public in the first place. Um, and they, they tried to convolute it with uh, – abandoned vehicles and and stuff like that there were some entities <coughs> they were saying that lawyers were saying like uh, uh this is just an open door for illegal search and seizure yeah wait a minute these are the people that are broke down on the side of the, yeah. the interstate or the highway or whatever roadway you want to be they're on yeah we're not even changing <coughs> why a vehicle's being towed yeah, we're, we're or, changing the protection of the folks that are out there in yeah, the world. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that's where, like, sometimes when legislation comes down the line is then people start tacking on a bunch of stuff. And you're mm-hmm. like, whoa, whoa, this ne- the, like, let's go back to, like, the original intent. Right. Like, we would talk about if, if we're trying to stop metal theft, then let's figure out how we're going to stop metal theft. We don't stop metal theft by adding 30 requirements for every scrap ticket that gets written, you know? Like, sure. If a guy has 10 pounds of aluminum cans or 20 pounds of aluminum cans, do we really need his driver's license and his this and his that and all the stuff that goes along with it? I'm like, there, are, are we trying to stop metal theft or are we trying to gather more data? And I think yeah. for you guys, just trying to create safety, like we're not trying to create em, em, embark on anybody's rights as an American. Right? We're just trying to make it a little safer yeah. on the freeway so we can do our job and that, protect the general public. Right. right. I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the when you get into <clears throat> the legislative ends of things, um, your eyes get opened mm-hmm. quickly. What's the biggest issue? Um, kind of transition a little bit, but what what do you, what issues do you guys see? Because that that you guys kind of have, have moved on from that um, from the move over law. So what what stuff are you guys working on right now? Um, just general industry industry stuff or any legislative stuff? Right legislative now, I mean, stuff? well, so we, we just re-elected our, our new board for the, the new term, uh, okay. 2020 to 2022. So that was kind of the focus, internal focus, yeah. for, for a good amount of time, nominations and voting and, and who's who and what's what. Uh, that's concluded. There was a little bit about ethics and professionalism that, that came about. We kind of dealt with that. Um, but I, I think right now it's kind of gathering. Uh, we just put out a big newsletter and a poll. What 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 would you like to see worked on? Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. kind of gathering information to see because it's not just up to us. Well, keep in mind, um, uh, Idaho's legislature ended right at the beginning of COVID. Right. Uh, in fact, I think they even closed down a week early, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even though they were talking about being three weeks late. Um, <coughs> the uh, Pardon me, microphone man. No, you're good. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the the stuff that was in there was was more paperwork related um, and uh, time constraints they wanted to put upon us and things like that. Uh, big scheme of things. Um, most of what and both of those passed, if I if I recall. Mm-hmm. Um, most both of those things uh, in a big scheme of things probably wasn't going to hurt us. Um, only because the state of Idaho can't uphold their end of it, yeah. so um, they can't even complete the time frames that was that were they were requesting in in that uh, that new law. So, um, but this year, like I said, um, we're kind of on a delay of everything. Yeah. Um, you know, we've missed a couple of meetings because of this. Um, I haven't seen my district people since January. 
and uh, versus how often were you seeing them before this? Uh, every month. Then we voted to an every other month just for the district side. Mm-hmm. The board still meets every month. Um, uh, but when we went to every other month. Then when March hit, then. Have you guys tried to do crazy. any Zoom meetings or any online like video conferencing? Our, our board or? meeting is your Zoom meeting. We do the okay. we do the board that way <clears throat> because that's statewide, obviously, and we have yeah. folks all over. We don't expect them to travel all the way here once a month just for a meeting when we travel yeah. there. So yeah, makes sense. Um, we're having one next week, and unfortunately, we know somebody that uh, donated some space for us to do an outdoor barbecue style. Super I don't want to drop people. any names. Yeah. Wink, uh, wink. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but it, in our in our business, it's important. I think it's important for us to see each other mm-hmm. face-to-face, to have those conversations. Um, hey, I love Zoom and, and all these cool, neat new things. Um, but the reality is uh, I don't think you get the, the same result. I think it's a good supplement. Like, it's mm-hmm. not – it shouldn't be the answer – um, exactly. I, I think it's just like anything else. It's like a, it's an extra tool in the toolbox. It shouldn't be the toolbox. Right. right. You know, I think that's the way I view it because for what I do, I travel a lot, I visit, you know, our consumers, customers, you know, vendors. And I, and I, and I haven't traveled, this is the least amount I've traveled in years. Like I, right. I, I'm almost like w- walking around wondering what I'm supposed to do with myself half the time. Yeah. But because I'm used to that, I'm used to the, the physical handshake how you doing let's go drink a beer let's discuss what's going on in the world sure and that i i think that 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 physical interaction people are starting to realize like that that's a pretty big part of business it's a pretty big mm-hmm. part of big, pretty big part of friendship it's a big part of a lot of stuff and you take that away it it, it takes away part of a piece of the puzzle in mm-hmm. my opinion and, and i don't think it's a whole lot different than texting you know Yes, you get the video. You can kind of see them in the mm-hmm. background yeah. and all that. But, um, you know, underneath the camera or somebody, you know, dropping the finger on you, you know, right. where, yeah, I don't know. And they can always turn away, you know. It, it, I don't think you get the full. Um, Are they even wearing clothes below right. their shirt? Right? <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> I was. <laughs> promise. I had pants on. <laughs> <laughs> but that is something that you want, like Rick said. I mean, somebody can turn off their camera and not even be sitting there anymore. Yeah. You know, and you just don't know. That's it. generally how I do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Put Great. the headphones on, listen. Make I'm not sure. kidding. I let the yeah. dogs out. You know, I put mute on. I can still hear everybody, hear everybody you uh-huh. know. I'm making my wife dinner. That, I don't know. Well, wherever it is. So how many tow companies are out there in the state of Idaho? Like, what's, how many, I mean, roughly estimate. How Functioning many, or registered? Both. Like, how many? Those are two different numbers. Yeah, I'm, uh, just like illegal immigrants versus actual, like, citizens, right? right. I mean, that's a so, big, dig, there's a big difference in When we started numbers. this thing, and we're just getting ready to reevaluate these numbers, but when we started this thing, we pulled the Secretary of State's list for any company that has the word towing in its name. And we came back with 640 some odd companies. Wow. Of that, we found out that only like 327 were actually functioning towing companies, mm-hmm. or at least they admitted to be functioning yeah. towing companies. Um, and that is one of the, the challenges, right? Who's out there that's running legal versus illegal? It's another kind of behind the scenes thing that an association is trying to look at. We want everybody on the same platform. Yeah. Right? Rick pays his bills. I pay my bills. He pays for insurance. I pay for insurance. He pays his annual fee to register with the state and for DOT and for inspections. And we, we all It's an even that. playing field. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How we do it, like you said, the intricacies of how he runs his company, how I run my bill, discuss that. It's not what the association is yeah. about. But yeah, the, the numbers are, are stacked. There, there's actually more companies, I think, last check in the Treasure Valley, uh, functioning, legal than probably the rest of the state put together. Well, the cool thing about that, the cool thing about that is, is say if you have 29 as part of the association now, then you have a pretty good opportunity for growth. If you can get everybody just just to kind of understand what the mission is, Mm -hmm. which is that's the word. That is the battle. That is the the biggest battle. Overcome old school thought, Uh, become more 21st century innovative. like you say, using those tools, mm-hmm. put those tools in your box. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be that way, but there's still guys out there doing hand rights, cash only, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, one truck, two truck situations. And two trucks may be all that's needed in a, in a specific area. You know, if, if you live in 
uh, Donley, then mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, really, two, three trucks in that whole valley up there, the Cache Valley could, you know, or Cache Valley, wow. Um, Valley County. Valley County. <laughs> Adams <laughs> County, too, kind of up that way. I lived yeah. in Cache Valley, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you, it, that may be all that's needed in that in that area. But can they still communicate with the outside world? Can they use a computer? They have cell phone, you know, um, using tow books, dispatching, uh, or a form of, you know, so you can email receipts, you can use a square to mm-hmm. receive payments, things like that, you know. Um, and can it all go inside of a truck with, yeah. a, with, a, with a good trained operator? You know what I'm saying? Um, unfortunately, you know, some of us don't want to change much, um, but it's going to be an eventuality. Um, in our business, we didn't have digital dispatching mm-hmm. um, until probably recently, and that was forced on us. You know, our, well, eventually you got to keep up, or you're going to get left behind. You know, yeah. that's, that's exactly. true with any industry. If you want, especially if you want to grow, if, yeah. If and you, I tell people, yeah, if you want to grow, but also I say, even if you want to maintain, like, yeah. Even if you don't, you're not trying to conquer the world in yeah. your industry, but if you just want to maintain the business that you've accumulated over your 30 x amount of years Mm -hmm. at some point you have to kind of digitize or you have Mm -hmm. to at least keep up with what's going on just to maintain that growth that you've that you've kind of worked so hard for and you open your eyes and you realize a different option like exactly what rick said that was me so right when i started towing and i'm I'm sure it was the same there were no cell phones we had a pager Mm -hmm. and when you got a call Guess what? Your boss gave you a roll of dimes at the beginning of your shift, and that was to find a payphone yep. and call the dispatch to get your next call. And you had to write it down on a pad of paper, and you had to flip pages and a map because yeah. there was no GPS either. Uh-huh. Um, I was so against, and I'm a computer major. That's what I went to school for. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't want to go to this telephone digital. No, I've got this. But then you realize it might be a learning curve. It might be a transition. It might be that big step that you're so afraid of, right? Uh-huh. We all fear change. Mm-hmm. But the efficiency is amazing. Yeah. And it brings that bottom dollar way closer. Yeah. So it, it, it is neat when you can take one step out of the equation mm-hmm. and you've just saved 15 minutes. And in our business, 15 minutes times, you know, we average 40, oh, 40 each calls a day. You know, it adds up. Yep. And sometimes I tell people, like, let's say that computers aren't your thing or, you know, Zoom means or setting all that up. That's not really your thing. Then go find somebody that that is their thing and let them help you, like, you know, move along. I mean, that's it may not be your you might be the equipment, the driver, like that's your wheelhouse. And then it's okay. Well, then find a way to find somebody and work it into the the budget to help you. That's the cool thing about association. Now I've got all these people that I, you know, communicate with. And so long as we can have a level conversation and we take the, the competition and set it to the side, we both have a common goal. Hey, how do you, how do you, or who do you use for this? Mm-hmm. Who do you use mm-hmm. for that? You know, um, have you got a better buy on straps? You know, mm-hmm. things like that. Those are common good, good goals. And um, I think it's great to be able to communicate. Uh, we have a, n- you know, this is a newer, younger uh, group of people. You know, I'm going to st- step out of branch and say you're probably probably a good 10 years younger than I am. And so maybe, uh, maybe 15. <laughs> <don't know. laughs> but it's good to see. It's good. It's good to see a guy like yourself at your age at this level in your business Absolutely. and willing to, you know, open doors and, and cross boundaries. And I mean, you built this, this is right. cool right here. Mm-hmm. You know, who would in the world would we ever think of sitting in a recycling center and having a, what do we call these podcasts? Podcast. Podcast. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I wouldn't have. And so it helps keep me young on that side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm not the physical guy I used to be, um, but <laughs> I'm <mean>. communicating <laughs> with, with this younger group in our industry that does have their eyes open and 
uh, wants to be a part of something mm -hmm. for a better future. As long as you're willing to learn, I don't care whether you're 80 or 20. Like yeah. some people are 20 and they just think they already know everything and they're mm -hmm. not willing to learn anything else. Sure. I think they're just in as bad a shape as the 80 year old guy that says, I'm good. And the cool I'm thing is learning, we can know? say hit the bricks, kid. Because if you don't want to learn, yeah, I, I got nothing for you. Yeah, because, I mean, it, everything is always evolving. Things are changing, you know. I mean, when we started, even when we started doing podcasts, I mean, we started out with our pipe business. And then we're like, hey, like, there's the on the scrap side is where, you know, we have a lot of influence and we mm -hmm. know a lot of people and we can help drive people's businesses that are doing shit the right way. And I think that's, like, the biggest, like, the biggest, like, feel good about the podcast for us is, you know, we get to sit down with, with guys, operators, owners, whatever it is, are people that are like, that are running good shops. They're good business. They're good operators. They're doing it the right way. They're trying to do something good for, for and they their care industry, about their, their business. business. Mm -hmm. They care about their business. And, you know, even on the recycling end, we try and bring people in here that people don't think about, Oh, tow, tow companies. They're like, really involved in the recycling business and we're like yeah like tow companies are are big big part of our business you know and try and it ends up in our yard before it ends up in yours right. yeah mm -hmm. and we try and bring Usually. those people to the to the top and just say hey like you guys are a big part of our business we appreciate your business we appreciate people that that run a good tight ship and they you know so i always i'm always say let's help each other and that's another facet in the association is crossing industry gaps and realizing where those layover the gap the overlaps are right like you yeah. just said our industry impacts yours yours impacts us um and that happens more than people know oh yeah know? yeah so it's a big that's a, being it's able a big to bring deal. those people together and make like rick was saying there's people that you can now talk to and i mean the reality like i said in the beginning i don't do heavy duty towing well guess what when my trucks break down that means i don't have a truck to tow them who do i call mm -hmm. I call rick yeah, <laughs> the old uh, saying: steel sharpens steel. Like you got, you know, if you you try and get with the best, and that's the way I've always said, you know, like find me the best operator in whatever industry. I, I want to be around them because that's how you learn. I mean, they they you may they may not be doing the same thing you're doing every day, but they've found a way to to, to be really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. So, oh, and it's and it's clear when you work with these people. That's what you know, got me sucked into you guys. I see your trucks. There's nothing more badass than badass, your heavy yeah. haul uh, mm -hmm. industry. Um, Thank you. you they, they are slick. Mm -hmm. And some of them might be 20 years old, but you'd never know it. Because they are done right. They're clean. Um, your equipment's clean. Uh, you guys do a great job of keeping your scrap area clean when you're breaking stuff down. You know, if I pull a truck in, I don't have to worry about losing the tire. You know, stuff like that. It's not like when I started as a kid, rolling through the dirt, mud road, you know, with all the broken parts and pieces mm -hmm. surfacing, yeah. taking out sidewalls. Um, you guys run a clean industry, and that's that's what uh, – and you communicate well, you know. One thing you I've got always – great staff. Yeah, one, one thing I, I, for sure. One thing I've always appreciated about you, Rick, is, like, you've been willing to call me when we are fucking up out there. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that's the call I want. I want I want that call probably more than the call, like, thank you. You know, I want that call. Because that's how you Cause, get better. Yeah, because I want to know. Yeah, right? If you don't know it's broke, you can't fix it. Yeah, because you're like, yeah. man, I was out there. No one helped me. Yeah. And, you know, and we fixed those problems. We've set up an area. And I, you know, I don't know if today or tomorrow, I'm going to show you our new area that we have set up, too, for for all the cars that you guys haul in. You know, because I think you called me, Lee, when this COVID thing happened, and you're like, are you guys going to be open? Because right. I got a full yard. Right. And, like, that would put your business, it would put a little damper on your business yeah. to store stuff if you can't get rid of some scrap. And I'm like, no, we're open. And I've been asking you to borrow a foot. So I can yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we probably would have brought you one. Yeah. <laughs> and that gets into, like, people just don't realize how important the towers are. If the towers weren't out there picking up all the junk that needs to be hauled off that's at end of life that needs to be hauled to a recycler you know our streets would just be rattled with scrap metal well and there was no bs in that whole beginning of covid it's and i did the same thing yeah hey man you gonna be open cool i'm yeah i just got 
15 cars cleared. Yeah. I'm going to flood you. I, I'm yeah. dumping everything right now. The market's still up, and you don't lie to me. Hey, the market's yeah. probably going to drop. And so, yes, this is your opportunity. Get and it in. So, boom. I mean, I this I've this is the least least amount of cars I've had in my yard in five years. Yeah. Well, that's because of this less people driving right now. And that's starting to open. You're probably feeling it. It's starting yeah. to open back up on your end. Yeah, that's good. Which which yeah. has been good. I'm starting to see pavement that I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. You know, and have that ability to try to clean it up a little bit, and, uh, you know, instead of keep burying it day after day. Well, people day. just don't even think about all those little things that are affected, you know, like by the stay-at-home order, this or that. Well, that's a lot less people on the road, which means that's a lot less toes. It's yeah. a lot less accidents. It's a lot less. I mean, it's just... The trickle down, it's, it, people. If you really want to dig into it, I mean, get industry by industry and yeah. how it's affects how it affects them. I mean, mo- a lot of people wouldn't even take it into uh, and a lot of it's a guessing game from here on out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. So, uh, if if people want to get a hold of you guys, the Toe Association, and people wanted to, uh, you know, hear more about what you guys are doing, whether they're a state legislator or whether they're another tow company that that likes what you're doing. How do they, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, well, the easiest thing is get on the website. Is, you know, they can get, contact us or whatever, idahotow.org. Okay. Uh, or uh, 208-240-9020 is the number for the association. Uh, if no one answers, they can leave a message. And we, every call gets returned absolutely that day. Okay. So, and um, we'll put those up on the video. Yep. Sure. So if, it, so if uh, somebody's driving down the road and they don't have a pen, we'll put it up so they can, they can watch it. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you guys. I, man, I, it's, it's good. I appreciate you guys coming by. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for, uh, yeah, it was yeah, awesome. Thanks for everything. Love and, to do it again. And uh, you got it. Look forward to sitting together. I, it'd be nice to sit back in a year and say, okay, now how many members do you have? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me too. All right. Thanks. All right, thanks. Well, thanks for having us. Yep. Appreciate it. You have a great day. Thanks. Good. Thank you for listening to another episode of Recycled Idaho. And as we continue the journey across this great state, we look forward to bringing you more stories of people and organizations putting in the work to do the right thing.